I'm eating the original ghee roast chicken in Mangalore, India. This famous dish attracts food lovers from all over India, just to get a taste of its magical flavor. She's used almost two bowls of ghee already, and that's all just for two chickens. But before we have ghee roast later tonight, we need to warm up our stomachs. It almost tastes like egg, but there's no egg. Mangalore is home to a few other iconic Indian foods that you don't want to miss. India really knows how to do snacks right. Good morning, hey everyone. Hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens. Welcome to Mangalore, which is in the state of Karnataka, which is on the west coast of India. So we're beginning bright and early this morning. We actually drove about 30 minutes outside of the city and we're starting with breakfast. Martin, good morning. Good morning. Where are we at this morning? Uh, this place is called Kaladga and the hotel name is KT Hotel, which means Kaladga Tea Hotel. The tea over here is very much famous. It was started in the year 1952. You would find many KTs around, but this is the original one, Lakshmi Nivas KT Hotel. Okay, great. Uh, Shivram Pulla. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to meet you. He owns the place. Okay, great. So we met with the owner here. Oh, man. This place is already busy and the aromas coming out of here are incredible. Good morning. Okay, he's preparing it now. Sugar, milk goes in. Oh, that ring move is incredible. So he's making the tea concentrate now, which then he'll use to make a lot of different cups of tea. Oh, that's very strong, extremely strong tea. Something that you have to eat for breakfast in Mangalore are the famous Mangalore buns. And so it's a combination of flour, sweetness coming from banana. Oh, it's a kind of a, yeah, it's a sweet bun, uh, but I love how they use the bananas. And you'll see bananas, I mean, all over Mangalore, rich in bananas, and that's part of the bun. So we're, we're just watching the process, how they make it now. We're gonna start with the legendary KTT and the Mangalore bun. I guess you do have to kind of stir it up so you mix the so you mix the tea and the, the milk together. How's the tea? Good. Excellent, yes. Oh, it's so creamy from that milk. Got that foamy froth on top. And the black tea on the like it's really strong. Very, very strong tea. It's so good. And it is extremely hot. I mean he's he's so careful to keep each component of the tea extremely hot, keeping things in boiled water, really keeping that perfect temperature so it stays hot. And the cup also remains hot. Martin, it's time. Mangalore yeah. buns, the yeah, legendary. The first bread. Oh. Look at how puffy it is. Yeah. This oh. is how it will be inside. Thank you. Oh, it's really light. Really light and aerated, fried on the outside. Again, it's a combination of flour and banana, so it's sweet. But it's actually served with the, the savory the But even without the, yeah, and even the even without the chutney, chutney or sambar, it you can eat it? Good. Yeah. So we should taste it on its own first? The sweetness that comes into it is from the banana. They add ripe bananas to it. And additionally, you immediately taste the flavor of jira. Uh, human seed, of, right? A bit human of cumin seed. seeds are also yeah. They put cumin seeds in it. It's not overly sweet though. Mm -mm. Like I wouldn't consider Just it a... Uh, a bit of sugar. And yeah. ripe bananas. And the ripe banana. And like, even curd goes into it. Oh, okay. They're making I think it for the fermentation, they're cream. adding curd. I thought it would be like more of like a sweet style bun. Not really. It's more of a... It's a kind of balanced thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not it's that a, much sweet to a that pleasant, end. Yeah. A hint of sweetness. Yeah. Like but how I can the see, porotite is. I can carrot. see how it will be excellent uh, together with those savory sambars and the coconut chutney. I'll dip it into the sambar. Looks like today the special is a... Looks like a uh, pumpkin sambar. Mm. 
you liked it with the sambar That's or good. just the buns alone? With the sambar. I love the sambar, yes. Oh, man, yes. Oh, the coconut chutney, the mustard seed, the curry leaf in there. So aromatic. Oh, it's tasty. Okay, we're moving on to the next dish. What is this, uh, Martin? Uh, this is called kotige. Kotige is nothing but idli. Then gets the name kotige because uh, it's prepared in jackfruit leaves. <laughs> it will absorb the flavors of jackfruit leaf. Oh, and you can even see the color has changed a little bit. It's taken Might on the... Be, uh, from the leaf. From the leaf, yeah. absorbed oh, a little it's, color. It's really bready, it's fluffy. I'll go for the sambar. This will be a little more softer than the usual idli. It is. To me, what's standing out is this idli is very moist. It's yeah. less dry. Yeah. Oh, it's not man. that tight like the other idli. Yeah. yeah. And it has a nice uh, kind of like tartness to it as well. Yeah. They know how to do breakfast in South India. This is called avalaki. Avalaki and musaru. Avalaki is nothing but beaten rice. Beaten rice. Yeah. So it's like just like flattened out rice. Flattened up rice. Yeah. And yeah, I'll, it, I'll pour the curd over yeah, sure. it. Yeah, sure. You can mix it well. So mix it. And then go for it. You see all the spices in there as well. And this is another thing that, is it specifically Mangalorean or, uh, or Karnataka? No, in Karnataka it's available in almost all okay. this. Okay, but something, this is going to be my first time to try this as well. Mm. Mm. The rice has a crunch to it and a little bit of a chewiness to it. And when curd goes into it, it will become more soft. Yeah, that kind of immediately makes it softer. Yeah. Easier to eat. And then the actual the actual uh, pounded rice is not, I think it's savory. I don't think it's sweet, but the curd is a little sweet. Yeah. You feel that combination, like the spiciness down your throat, but the curd kind of like calming you at the same yeah. time. Incredible combination of Salty, savory, sweet, and spicy all together. Now next up. This is sprouted moong dal beans. Nice. And it's called hesaru over here. You the healthiest option, here. sprouted mung beans, coconut chili. Here they have it with uh, beet and rice also. They mm. mix it with beet and rice. And it has a little bit of a sweetness as well. Mm. Oh, I love that crunch of the, the coconut. The freshness of the green chili. Try this cake. Yeah. And again, it's a mix of savory and sweet because it's a cake, but with onions on top. Whoa, it's dense. It's a bit thick. It's better yeah. to hold it with hand. Yeah, yeah, it's really dense. Otherwise, it might get off the plate. <laughs> <laughs> it might slide, yes. Mm. Oh, that caramelized onion flavor you're getting more, I guess. That yeah. is what you immediately taste. I'm glad we started in the back for those onions. But, mm, that's actually not that sweet of a cake again. Mm -hmm. It's just mildly sweet. Mild, yeah. Almost All like the, the, the are, bun, yeah. yeah. It's really good as well. And again, the, the caramelized onions are what really is powering it, giving it that flavor. This is yeah, a special order. Tomato omelet. Tomato omelet. It's but, like an omelet pancake. Tomatoes in here, peppers. Maybe this time I'll go for the coconut. And this was specifically recommended by the wife of the owner here. She recommended it. Does it, it almost tastes like egg. <laughs> but no egg. <laughs> but there's no egg. Is that in my head? I think Micah would like I it. Literally, yeah. I literally almost taste egg. I think it's that Micah, combination you of try? bell peppers, onions, tomatoes. So you think you're eating an omelet, and yet it's rice flour, batter, dough. Oh, it's delicious. It is exactly as oily and as soft as you think an omelet is gonna be. And then because there are those onions, I actually can't believe that there's no eggs in it. This can be a lesson to like humans' expectations. When you have such expectations, it actually can override other senses. Because I'm tasting that <laughs> it's just an yeah. egg omelet. Yeah, I literally taste I really tasted egg in there. It's, it's incredible. And it's I mean it's so delicious. It is. Mr. Mr. Damana. He's here from Mr. Damana. Okay. Oh yeah. And so it's right by the university, right? I did my degree here. Oh, so that's your university. Yeah. So everybody knows him. He's the man. 
He has such a cool, it's not even, I mean, it's a food stall, a food truck. It's more than a food truck. 1960s van that looks like it hasn't moved in years and he's cooking out of that. So we're gonna try a local Mangalore style street food chat. And he's invited us in to see the cooking process. Oh, so onions go in, coriander goes in, green mango, yes. Chili, chili powder? No, chili powder. Salt. Salt. Oh, peanuts. Coconut oil. Coconut oil. Tomatoes he's been chopping up. Hard boiled eggs. Yes. Yes. Oh, he mashes up that hard boiled again. Amazing move. This is the puffy rice. A whole handful of puffy rice goes in. That smells incredible. Thank you. Oh, I can't wait to try it. I love, I love combinations of chat, combinations of flavors. Snacks in India are just so tasty. Oh, the egg just completely mashed up. Oh, peanuts in there too. Delicious. The flavor of the chili powder. I love the onions, coriander. The peanuts are great. The crispiness of the rice. It's like juicy, crispy, a little bit spicy and refreshing all at the same time. Mm. So good. Wonderful textures and flavors. And you're telling me that the egg is something that's unique to mango yeah. here. Other versions, like you won't find an egg. Usually they don't add egg into this thing. I think this person, Diamond only popular. Oh, with him. Him specifically adds the egg. Oh. I think he started the thing. I mean, you could tell he, he was a master creamy. from just watching him cook it. And that's really genius because it adds this creaminess from the yolk. Yeah, the yolk gives yeah. it a different taste to it. Definitely. What a mixture. And what a setting too. Underneath the tree, it's really breezy and cool here. Um, he has a tent, a tarp set up. It's just so great atmosphere. Tasty snacks. India really knows how to do snacks right. Mm. And it's so fresh and refreshing. I mean, if you compare this to like a, a bag of chips or something, oh, Tarmuri would win every time. That was great. Again, he's in the bright blue Mahindra. You can't miss it. But yeah, some fantastic charmuri. Uh, and especially the Mangalorean style charmuri. It's the middle of the afternoon in Mangalore, so we're stopping for something cold and refreshing. And many people say, well, from what I've heard, it's one of the most famous places to eat ice cream in all of India. So there's a yeah, very, very popular place. This place made Mangalore the ice cream capital of India. Yes. <laughs> this is there yes. from long and every day the crowd will be same. Every here. single day. Yeah. Wow, it's a really nice place too. Hello. It's a really nice and modern ice cream parlor and yet it definitely has a lot of character. Hi. Yes, hello. hello. So we're here and it's an honor to meet you, the owner here at Pabas. And will you tell us a little bit about the history here? Ideal ice cream, which was started by my father as Prabhupada in 1975. In 1996, we opened Pabas. Why the name Pabas? Because my father's name is Prabhakar. His nickname is Pabas. Pabas. Oh, okay. That's the name Pabas. Okay, great. And uh, recently, uh, about a few months back, our Gutbird ice cream was chosen to be the top 100 iconic ice cream of the world by Taste Atlas. Wow. And uh, last last month, we were chosen to be the world's seventh best ice cream parlors of the world. First taste of the famous Garbad, what so many people come here, come to Mangalore for. I want to get all those layers. There's a jelly. Oh, there's jellies and that might be too much though. All right. Mm. How does it 
Mm. I really love those cashews in there. And even it the jelly, good. that jelly makes it. Oh yeah, yeah. that kind of like raspberry jelly. It's definitely very sweet, but also I like the fruits and the nuts in there. Really creamy and milky. Do they, and I think they probably make their own ice creams here. All of yeah, their own they ice make creams. their own the ideal ice creams, right? This ideal brand is owned by Papa's. Okay. Mm. Yeah, all the different jams in there, the cashews, and you get more and more yeah. goodies down below there. Oh. Okay, that's okay. Ice cream pun. One of their signatures here. We couldn't leave without trying the ice cream pun. It's not really a pun, but it's all made from candies and jellies and ice creams. <laughs> go, go. It tastes like pan only. It does taste like pan. Yeah, it's minty and like the all those spices. Flavor of the pan meat. Yes. Okay, that's genius. That is amazing. It has all those floral flavors of the pan. That's actually incredible. Yeah, and that right there was worth coming to Papa's for. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we just finished our ice cream at Papa's. It's so popular, but the people eating there are so friendly. I mean, that's something I have to mention. The people of Mangalore are extremely friendly. From here this afternoon, we're planning to maybe just go around a little bit, eat a few more snacks, uh, try some street food, and then have dinner. Yeah, this is the place. Next up, we're trying a very popular street food stall on the side of the road in the evening. And so they're, they're well known for their milchi, milchi bhaji, which is she takes the green chilies, puts them into the batter, and then deep fries them. And that's what everyone is here for. That's their top seller. Although they have a few other things as well, but fried crispy green chilies, that smells so good. Okay, and the chutney, so onions. Hold on real fast, okay. Oh, thank you. Oh, here we are, the milchi, milchi bhaji. Milchi bhaji? Milchi bhaji. With chutney, with onions, served with onions. Oh, this is what everybody's enjoying here. I'm gonna dip it into that chutney. Green chutney. Mmm. Fried hot and fresh. Really bready with that batter and crispy. And then the flavor of the spicy green chilies in the center. Not too spicy, but have a really beautiful green flavor to them. Mm. And you can taste with onions. Dip it in more of that chutney. Oh, the chutney is amazing. The green chili chutney is off. Very tasty, a very good snack, very popular as well. And she just makes it fresh here on the side of the street. Swipe up that green chili chutney. It's green chili on green chili. Yeah, then grab an onion, put it all onto your bite. That is a, a world-class street food. Mm. That was really good. There's a lot of dishes, foods that you absolutely don't want to miss when you come to Mangalore. But there's one dish, the ghee roast chicken, that's maybe the most legendary, the greatest of them all. And it's finally time. We're at the original location. We're gonna learn about its unique history and we're gonna see the process of it being made before we eat it. Okay, so I'm here with Harish Adi. Very nice to meet you. Yeah, pleasant meeting you, sir. And you're gonna, can you share with us a little bit about the history of Shetty this Lanchum. restaurant and, and also how chicken ghee roast was invented? Yes, yes. Our, our restaurant, Shetty Lancham, started in the year 1957 by our uh, grandparents. Since then, we are uh, running the restaurant. We are the four, uh, third generation at the moment. The ghee roast recipe was founded by our uh, grandparent only. So we have a different uh, recipe uh, for that. But now everybody is having the ghee roast in the entire world in, in their own uh, manner. So the original is still here only, the recipe. So that's the secret style of what we do. So that is done here only in Mango. Mm. 
and we're stepping into the kitchen. Nice. Maybe messy, so That's okay, no problem, no problem. Hello. Immediately greeting upon you as you enter the kitchen is the, the masala for the ghee roast. They grind over 25 kilos of chilies per day. The aroma of the red chilies is, oh, it smells so good. That's the gyros masala. Okay. That's the fish fry masala. That's our secret masala what we add to the ghee roast. Oh, so there's another masala that you yeah, add to the, the, the ghee roast? And then this is, this is the ghee? We melt the butter and uh, we do the ghee. Okay. So that's how the color is slightly different. Must we add the ghee? Oh, the ghee goes in. I mean, when you hear just ghee roast, roasting we often think of like maybe fire grilling, but actually it's not a fire grilling technique at all. It's more of like a roasting in a pan with a slow heat and the ghee just kind of roasts that paste. And so what we're seeing now is, uh, I mean, she started with a lot of ghee. Um, and then put on that entire bowl of that ghee roast masala paste. And now she's just slowly like working it. You can see it starting to brown, starting to caramelize. That aroma is coming out of that masala. I mean, I think the way the, the technique that they're, she's roasting it, it's really gonna just fully bring out the flavor potential of all the ingredients in that masala. Oh, some more ghee goes on. Oh, and she keeps just feeding it ghee as it starts to dry out and as it starts to thicken, absorb into that masala. And next up, that next masala goes in. The green masala goes in. Oh, more ghee goes on. Oh, you just keep adding ghee, feeding the ghee in. Oh man, it just keeps absorbing into the masala paste. So it's been about 10 or 15 minutes now and she just continually feeds it with ghee and just slowly roasts that paste. Now the aromas are starting to even change. I mean, as she keeps on roasting it and she has to keep, like continually stir it continually keep an eye on it so it doesn't burn. 25 minutes yeah, yeah. to make the paste, the paste masala. The chicken, the and then little. you add the chicken and another Take 20 minutes, 45 minutes, 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 45 minutes to 45 make minutes, it. Yes. Wow. She's used two bowls, almost two bowls of ghee already. And that's all just for two, two chickens. <laughs> the quantity, the ratio. Yeah, that's, uh, that's some experience. That's a, that's a well-proven recipe. I'd say we're about 20 minutes in now, and it went from a watery paste to like a lava paste. How do you know when it's ready? Whatever the ghee has been absorbed, it starts leaving at the side. And you can see now that the ghee is starting to kind of bubble out of it, or the ghee is starting to kind of break. The chicken is boiled with salt and little haldi, I mean turmeric powder. Okay. So I add the chicken. She adds in two chickens, which have been pre-cooked already. She's had to stir it the entire time. And it's not just like a gentle stir. It's like scraping off the plastered caramelized masala. And now you can see that the masala is starting to really harden and thicken. You would be hard to search for anywhere with a more mouthwatering dish ever. <laughs> this is one of the most, most saliva-inducing dishes you could possibly have. Joel and I are over here just the smell is drooling. Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now the masala is really starting to harden. It's starting to almost crumble. Crumble and thicken. That ghee roast is ready after 45 minutes. That's an unbelievable process. Uh, but before we eat it, we're gonna learn how to make the special type of nir dosa that is the best combination to eat with it. So it's not like the regular thick dosa, but it's water. So oh, neer okay. means water. We soak okay. the rice for one to two hours, oh, okay. and then we grind it into a smooth paste, and then add required amount of water before uh, making the dosa. Yeah, because it's so liquidy, it just kind of really spreads out across the skillet, and then immediately kind of bubbles up.
Martin, we're sitting down. This is an unbelievable meal. Martin, how should we go in? Yeah, we'll start with having one ghee roast and nir dosa first. Okay, just taste the, taste the nugget of the ghee roast. Oh, look, it just immediately, the ghee roast just colors your fingers. Oh, look at that is something truly spectacularly beautiful. You're getting oh. that ghee and even the masala. <laughs> oh. oh man. Good yeah. right? It has a flavor like unlike anything you'll ever yeah, it taste. Feels, like it's yeah. so toasty and yeah. roasted flavor. The ghee is just so condensed. And it, the, what the ghee has done also is caramelized and browned all of that masala to the point where it's just absorbed and thickened and created almost like solidified. Like it's just hardened into this. I mean, that paste is really, really soft, but it's just like caked. And it just coats everything in that flavor. That's just unbelievable. And as you, it's kind of like a, uh, the masala is just, once you take a bite, mm. it just coats your entire mouth. Yeah. That is just an incredible flavor. Yeah. Worthy hype. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's everything I thought it was going to be and more. <laughs> because the water is so battery and you can see how bubbly it is. It's really light, really fluffy. And take a little of masala. Like a piece of chicken. Hold it. So I'll break a piece of that. Oh man, that dosa is, it's so spongy. So spongy. And I'm going right into that piece that's just plastered in the, in the roast. Oh man. That is unbelievable flavor. Oh man. And the, with that dosa, it's really like sticky and now fluffy. This is double delight. Yeah. Yes. It pairs perfectly together. Everything just melts in your mouth. The richness of that ghee roast, it is so rich. Oh, that is absolute sensation in your mouth. Uh, that is, that's life changing. That might be the most ghee that you'll ever have, like condensed in a single bite. It's just like plastered. It's a plaster of masala and ghee. The richness of the flavor is almost like a mature cheese. It's that powerful, but it's even better because it's like super spicy. Okay, so he's gonna prepare another dish, um, the, which is called ladyfish, the ladyfish. We're gonna see how that's made as well. But this time it's not ghee, but coconut oil. Oh, so you already like marinated it in some of that masala? Okay. Oh man, this is just yet another unbelievable recipe. And this one smells totally different because of coconut oil instead of ghee. And that gives it a totally different aromatic scent. But again, just that masala sizzling, the coconut oil starting to break and he just keeps lightly basting the fish in that masala coconut oil mixture. It's truly unbelievable Mangalorean cooking. And you can see at this stage, the masala starts to dry out. Uh, the liquid starts to dry out, so you're left with the coconut oil and the paste, which is thickened and condensed. That's another unbelievable recipe, and he finishes off. Once the fish is cooked, don't want to overcook the fish, uh, so he scoots the fish to the side, he just finishes off that masala, gives it the final roast until it darkens, uh, and then scrapes it off and then puts it, plasters it onto your fish and done. Oh man, it's, it's getting to be almost unbearable. All right, let's move in for the fish. Yeah. Thank you. I'm gonna go in for some of this, the lady fish. Oh, oh man, it is so soft. And again, the roasting process, but with coconut oil. 
instead of... This will of, taste even better oh, uh, when it's hot, like from oh, the pan. Oh, I'm you sure. Can I'm sure. How is this? Outstanding again. And the texture is really nice. Yeah. It's really silky. Um, you really feel buttery. the difference about, uh, with the coconut oil and even the ghee, right? Definitely. It's not quite as rich or heavy. But um, this will give the flavors of all the coconut oil flavor you get. You really taste the coconut oil, yeah. You can taste the masala in the fish. has a, yeah, a little bit more of a, a tanginess. Ginger, garlic, tamarind water. Oh, and in the texture of that fish. Yeah, and the aroma of the coconut oil. I mean, it's absolutely stunning yet again. I'm really impressed with the, the water dosa as well. It just goes so well. Through. I mean, if you, wanna, if you want anything to melt in your mouth, just eat it with the new dosa. Okay, let's try the prawns gyros. Martin, you wanna try a prawn? Yeah, I have. Mm. Oh, wow. And this is something different. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's equally stunning with the flavor of the prawn and it's bouncy in your mouth with all that same ghee roast masala. Words can hardly describe how tasty that is. And we've got one more special dish coming up. What is it called? Kore, kore roti? Kore means, uh, kore means chicken. Ah. Uh, chicken in uh, our Tulu language, yeah. And so this is like crispy wafer, almost like wafer yeah, thin. Yeah, it's like wafer only. A wafer thin uh, roti. So we've got a bowl of chicken curry. Oh, and you just put that over it. And the curry will be poured on top of the ah. So then it's just gonna just start to absorb, rehydrate. Oh, what a dish. So now, now it just almost immediately just absorbed and then you can go it, oh, so many layers. You gotta really mix it. Oh, you gotta, you can feel can the crispiness. Can I mix it or just have it like that? Or ah, go okay. Towards. It's crispy. If you mix it That's well, such uh, a you'll get dish. Uh, whole curry more will be absorbed. Crispy? Okay. So, or if you let it sit longer, I'm sure it's gonna absorb more and kind of get a little soggy or you can eat it now and it's kind of like still remains crispy. And now it's okay to eat it like this? Right, yeah? totally. Oh man. This Done is it the again. one dish I miss every day once I leave mango. <laughs> oh man. That is like, it has this little wafer, paper thin crispiness to it, like phyllo dough almost, except totally different. And then it just starts to absorb with that incredible chicken curry, all the flavors of that chicken curry, the spices, the cinnamony flavors, the just absorbs into every layer of that bread. And you just break it apart with your fingers and just, yeah. I mean, really cannot compare it to anything but imagine that crunch you get from baklava with all those different layers yeah, in curry form. It's like, and it's totally Mangalorean, its own thing. That's incredible. Just so addictive, I think, the textures, the textures that you have with that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love how it absorbs the gravy. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, thank you. Uh, chicken curry is stunning. What a legendary restaurant. And something that I love about it, I mean, the recipe, the dish is a flavor overdose, but it's also a part of family history in Mangalore and actually in a, an adjacent town not far away, but it's, it's part of their family history. And it's now a dish, I mean, that originates with them, but that you'll find all over India, even at Indian restaurants all over the world. Ghee roast from Karnataka, from Mangalore. What an incredible dish. Mangalore has been incredible. The hospitality, the delicious food. Uh, I'll have all the information in the description box below and I wanna say a huge thank you to uh, Martin for arranging everything and great to hang out with my friend Joel. And thank you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And also remember to subscribe and also watch this entire uh, Karnataka India series where we're going around the state and eating some of the best Indian food it's truly been just a flavor overdose that you're not going to want to miss any of it. Thanks again for watching. Good night from Mangalore, and I will see you on the next video.